and Paolo Ciccarelli again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to restart uh, this uh, series of conversation that we stopped, we put in standby for the summer, and uh, we had uh, four installments in the spring edition, and now this is the full edition of the conversations. We, The aim of this series is to really cross um, different uh, relationships within design and other disciplines. So we uh, started with uh, physicalization of data as a way to connect with um, architecture and design and data and computer science. Then we moved into the relationship between game design and health. And again, another uh, bridge between design and journalism in, in the, the third edition, the third session that was about misinformation and the role that interfaces play with that. And uh, last but not least, in the spring, um, we really wanted to uh, deep dive into the pluriverse concept and how this may affect the notion of design thinking. So I'm really happy to have this series restarted now with a, a very interesting topic again that really fit with the mission of the center, that is to reflect on design as a discipline. And in this case, what is the role of design tools in design um, and in service design, especially, that is the, I would say, the, the field of research of Miso Kim, that is the current, the moderator of this session. All the sessions are usually moderated by one of the co-faculty members of the Center for Design. So Miso Kim, Professor Kim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paolo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the conversation series five. Today, we will talk about service design tools with our wonderful guest from Politecnico di Milano. I'm really excited about this opportunity because the service design tools website has been one of the greatest source of inspiration that helped me to study and teach service design. Service is often characterized by intangibility. Therefore, service design tools have played a crucial role in the design process and in co-production of the stakeholders. Tools are more than just methods. They are also models that represent principles behind how and why we make the services. However, methods can be altered when situations change. Therefore, the principle behind the methods must be studied so that the why supports the how. This will help us to develop knowledge that fosters service design communities that strives to improve the world and enhance people's lives. Over the last decade, service design has become a mature field, but we are facing challenges such as climate change, new technologies, and social injustice, in addition to the COVID-19 pandemic. How can we rethink service design tools, expand them, and reformulate our relationship with those tools? Today, we will discuss why tools are so essential in service design and consider the future direction of service design represented by these tools with our panelists. Dr. Stefano Maffei is full professor at the School of Design, Politecnico di Milano. He's the director of the Service Design Masters and Design for Food Masters programs and the Service Innovation Academy at Politecnico di Milano. He's also the director of Polyfactory, the fab lab makerspace which integrates a co-working space and a product service system research lab that explores innovation models connected to micro and distributed production. His current research and work interests are focused on service design innovation, design-driven innovation in local productive systems, new production distributed models, and advanced distributed micro-manufacturing micro systems. Roberta Tashi is a service design expert who is known worldwide as the author of service design tools. She's the founder and design director of Oblo, a hyper-specialized studio based in Milan. She's also the former head of service design at the digital transformation team of the Italian government. Dr. Francesca Bogliani is adjunct professor and researcher at Politecnico di Milano. She's didactic coordinator of the specializing master in service design. 
Her expertise lies in service design with a particular focus on the integration of the service design approach and the evaluation culture. She currently works on research projects dealing with urban regeneration and on consultancy projects supporting organizations in managing innovation processes through ethnography and co-design. So with this introduction, I will pass the ball to our guest. Are you ready? Yes, uh, I think I can uh, start. Um, unless Stefano wants to say something. Uh, just, just uh, uh, thank you for uh, for uh, Miso and for Paolo for inviting us. I think that bringing in our experience and uh, uh, let's say the Milan take on service design, I think it's a good thing. And we want to discuss this with you also to, I think, discuss, compare the two different approaches, those of Northeastern and ours. So I think it will be a, a great debate together. Thank you. So I will just give a brief introduction and then leave the floor to Roberta, who will uh, talk more extensively about the service design tools uh, platform. So I, I'm Francesca Foglieni. I am a service designer and a design researcher, and I've worked for uh, several years at research and consultancy projects aimed at supporting public organizations and companies in innovating their service offering and experiences uh, through a user-centered and systemic approach. Uh, in the past eight years, I have created in particular the uh, didactic program of the Master in Service Design of Poly Design and it is with particular uh, connection to this program that uh, our uh, reflections as a research group um, started, uh, started to emerge on service design tools and started being developed. Uh, so taking advantage also of the long time expertise uh, on the topic of our research group, which at uh, Polytechnico has been among the first uh, to run academic research on service design, and uh, uh, thanks to the collaboration with Roberta, uh, who founded the Service Design Tools platform, uh, in the last two years, we had the chance to explore the evolution of the role uh, of tools in service design practice from many different angles. Uh, and now I'm just going to give you a preview of what these angles are. Uh, in particular, what we uh, understood from uh, this exploration is that uh, while, uh, as we probably all know, some basic tools are becoming more and more acknowledged also by non-designers, uh, thus creating a widespread knowledge, uh, a widespread background knowledge on the potentialities of service design. Uh, on the other end, it is uh, uh, becoming increasingly uh, relevant for professionals in the field to uh, expand their toolbox toward uh, a new generation of instruments that thematically address new uh, societal challenges. Uh, so far, uh, we have investigated how uh, service designers can approach design for healthcare and the circular economy and how to face uh, uh, AI, behavioral change, future casting, and uh, many other uh, topics are in our uh, agenda for the next future. Uh, in most of these cases, what we realized is that as uh, already, already happened in, in the past with uh, some sociology and service management, for example, uh, extra disciplinary knowledge is needed to uh, be able to elaborate thematically oriented tools and that more and more what distinguishes a, a design professional from a non-designer uh, approaching service design uh, is the uh, capability to go beyond such codified tools. But I now leave to uh, Roberta uh, to uh, give you an overview on, uh, on service design tools platform and uh, the work we have done together uh, in the last uh, years. Thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and also to take the opportunity to share reflections that come from both, let's say, research and practice as uh, I mainly have been working as service designer 
for the past um, 10 years across different uh, uh, companies, also, also multinational like Frog and uh, more local based uh, design agencies. Um, I think uh, what is helpful to do to start the conversation before entering in the questions part is to have a look together at uh, service design tools and take that as an opportunity to, uh, to understand the role that the tools have uh, in our practice, the intention that was behind the creation of it, and the intention that is uh, moving our research nowadays. So the, the, the service design co tools collection is basically a collection of, uh, of tools that was created uh, based on the work I've been doing in my research for the graduation uh, back in 2009. Uh, it was published um, uh, at the beginning. And uh, the idea in that moment was really, we were really at the beginning of uh, including service design in the education field. There were the first uh, agencies uh, proposing and um, offering a service design in their consultancy work, uh, and also first conferences held on the topic. And something that uh, we were uh, all asking ourselves was really like, how do we support uh, practitioners, professionals that deal with these uh, intangible subject matter as services are very intangible and also characterized by the, uh, discuss the dialogue with multiple stakeholders. So how do we support the designers and other professionals in uh, designing services and so there was a lot of uh, looking at different uh, disciplines in order to steal uh, tools and uh, methodologies that could uh, facilitate the dialogue around services and, uh, and their design. Uh, there were a lot of experiments going on uh, on uh, using uh, maps, diagrams, photo montages, and other things that were, was, were taken from uh, cinematography, from business management, uh, from so social science, and other disciplines. So that was uh, uh, the idea was to really give this knowledge back to the community and uh, doing it by basically. Um, representing uh, all the different uh, tools and experiences that were um, people were discussing in that moment. And uh, the collection is structured around the taxonomy uh, that tries to basically also guide uh, the audience of the platform in browsing the collection because uh, uh, we can use different techniques, different uh, visual uh, representations and uh, uh, models in order to discuss different aspects of the service, in order to engage different kinds of people in the conversation, in order to support the different steps of uh, the design activity. Uh, so this create, uh, was used to create some uh, structure, let's say, and the way of thinking of the different uh, tools and techniques techniques and uh, apply them in, uh, in uh, the everyday practice. What is interesting, in my opinion, is that uh, back in, those, in that moment, uh, those tools were all somehow equal one to the other. But then uh, over time, we have seen some of them becoming really like standard in our experience uh, as uh, designers working every day on, on, on this topic. And some of them are really something that uh, we never, uh, let's say, do any project without using it. And I just want to mention one example, it is the journey map. Uh, this at the moment was really like one of the many type of maps and diagrams that I found. But now there is a really like a no, almost no project experience since which we don't use it. And I think the success of some of these um, tools and visual representation is really the fact that they are easy to understand and apply in practice. So when we think of uh, splitting an experience into steps and describing uh, uh, in these uh, tables or charts uh, how the user interacts uh, with the different touch points in the different moments of the experience, this is something that uh, even people who are uh, maybe not so much into um, mapping uh, complex processes or uh, stuff like that, they can re really easily understand and apply in their work. And I think this is uh, what made some of these tools really successful in bringing good service design, let's say, or service design into organizations and helping people really um, 
understand the experience of the users, the processes and uh, design them. Now, this already exists and uh, in a way it's part of our everyday work. What we started to be more, let's say, concerned about uh, is more related to um, what we see in our work uh, after, let's say, with the maturity that we see in service design in these days, we also understand and we see around us uh, <laughs> many services have been used in different ways, some of them with uh, mm, uh, specific outcomes also in the, in the way uh, cities, uh, economies and communities build relationship uh, and the people want to each other. And so we started to ask ourselves more questions around the impact uh, that uh, the services we design and the activity of designing services is having on uh, the way in which basically humanity is being shaped. We also started to be more aware of the fact that uh, uh, the, there is an urgent, let's say, uh, need to focus on uh, reducing the impact on the environment. Uh, but we don't necessarily take that into account uh, every day when we work on uh, new services that, that we design with the, the, the methodologies we are using. And we started to, uh, to see that uh, some of the emerging technologies, such as AI, but also many others, uh, could really have uh, a significant impact uh, or consequences or effect on aspects such as human behavior and the uh, cognitive abilities of a person, for example, uh, with the long-term, let's say, usage or interaction with certain uh, mechanism. And so we felt kind of unprepared uh, recently, looking at the, all the tools and the models that we have collected that, that we use every day, and so we started again to uh, kind of go back to a research mode as uh, uh, we were online uh, 10 years ago, uh, asking ourselves uh, where we could, we could look, um, what disciplines we could study, what models we could, could bring in uh, to make sure that uh, people designing services take those uh, aspects into account uh, in their work. And so we started to look at behavioral uh, science and uh, uh, theories related to behavior change and how they could be brought in uh, in some ways uh, with some techniques. We started to look at system thinking uh, and how to amplify the way in which we look at uh, the system and the elements in the service so that we can bring in more, uh, let's say, environmental conscious reflections. Uh, we started to look at uh, forecasting techniques in order to help our clients, organizations, and in general, people with design services looking at long-term consequences and scenarios related to um, the use of, uh, of uh, what they offer. And, and uh, yeah, we really see the need to to uh, ampl amplify, let's say, uh, and uh, expand the, the, the type of uh, methodologies and that we normally use, because that could be a way to help people approaching uh, their work in a, in a more responsible way, if we want to use this term, and making sure that that doesn't happen uh, once in a while. Uh, but thanks to the conceptual frameworks that these uh, tools, let's say, let's say, basically bring on the table, uh, open up the opportunities to consider other aspects that we are not fully considered, uh, considering, let's say, in our everyday work, as we are very much focused on uh, user-centered design and, uh, let's say, organizational needs on the other side. So this is where we are at, and uh, more than happy to uh, listen to your questions and uh, uh, evolve the conversation from here. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm especially impressed by your comment about the uh, tools being conceptual framework that opens up possibilities that we can consider service design and challenges from diverse perspective. <laughs> I think that leads to directly to like my first question. So, so I prepared like a three like a generic questions to facilitate our conversations. So the first one is, why are tools so important in service design? You, in a sense, you already answered to this question, but I think it'll be interesting to hear like a different perspectives and thoughts about this. Excellent. 
Actually, that's coming from my like a particular observation. Uh, in other areas of design, for example, like a product design, I have impression that the process of making is often governed by the actual like a crafting of the things. However, in service design, there is actually a lot of emphasis on tools and methods compared to other areas. So I think it will be interesting to discuss like why would that be. <laughs> I think uh, this is uh, very much connected to uh, the complexity, let's say, that uh, the service designers deal with on one side. And on the other side, the fact that uh, our one of our main values that we can uh, bring in the conversations when we work with companies uh, is our capability as designers to uh, make things more uh, tangible, help people Im imagine things that don't exist yet. And this is uh, quite difficult when you are talking about services. So that's, uh, uh, that's uh, I think, one of the aspects. Uh, uh, you mm -hmm. have to consider that designing services uh, always uh, involve many different people with different backgrounds. Uh, and this is not necessarily the case all the times for people designing products, for example. And so basically, uh, I think there is a lot of effort because uh, uh, we need support somehow with the visualizations, with maps, uh, with the, the diagrams that we built and the narratives. Uh, we need support in uh, giving tangibility to what we are trying to say, to explain to, to the stakeholders we work with and uh, to somehow sometimes the users and all the people that need to be part of uh, an open design process. If I may add something to Roberta's take, uh, I think that the word that you used uh, was very precise, is crafting. I, I, I deal also with the idea of material production. And I think that sometimes when we talk about the intangibility of services, we forgot that, yes, the, 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 the performance is intangible, but the, the, the services are real. So are made of things that are connected. So if I have to mention this, uh, probably we could uh, uh, take into account Arturo Escobar perspective that, that talks about the idea of radical interconnection between things. So it's, it's, it's a fact that services is a kind of goal oriented with a scope action and we design it through a complex system of interaction or material things, uh, information, whatever. But in general, we are affecting the system. So sometimes when we use uh, a set of tools, we are usually reducing a little bit this complexity. And sometimes this works, sometimes not. In this case, mentioning your challenges, your, your first statement in which, in which you were mentioning climate challenge, we could not reduce so much. Because reducing, 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 the final uh, effect is this extractivist kind of vision in which we imagine that we could take whatever from the environment, uh, that we could use uh, our world as an infinite source of things, materials and whatever. And, and, and this is not the, the reality. So I think that we have to mm, be clear that the fact that the services are part of the, our material experience. They are not, they are intangible, they are part of that. So uh, the other keywords that you mentioned, impact is important. So I think we have to a little bit open, not only in terms of open innovation, but also in terms of opening the perspective and let the system in, in the service design. So this, this is our, uh, our choice, just because we know uh, how, how it's hard to manage this complexity, but we need, I think, an added level of representation, visualization, complexity. So Paolo's work here, I think. And, and other things that are involved, a more clear idea of what the long-term impact are of our actions, so service action, just to say. So uh, I think a lot of uh, food for thought, I think, for, for our conversation, just because I think we have to include some externalities that classically in political economy are live like not considered and, and, and including them means changing a little bit our framework in terms of service design. So what we need to really face these challenges. Thank you, that's amazing. Francesca, do you like to add something as well? 
I, I totally agree with what uh, has already uh, been said. Uh, I think that uh, for sure um, tools are crucial to, to service design because of the nature of, the, of services. Mm -hmm. um, but also because <clears throat> differently maybe from other design disciplines, the uh, contribution of other stakeholders uh, is mm. uh, more relevant in the design process. And uh, uh, using tools, uh, be, it, it's a way to uh, align languages and uh, competencies, even though, of course, there remain a risk uh, of uh, not limiting too much to the use of tools and then give the right uh, chance to complexity to emerge. Thank you very much. Oh, I totally agree. And then if I may add, I also think that like uh, one of the characteristics of service that the outcome of design doesn't exist until the stakeholders uh, co-produce the service. So in other areas, we have like a material like that mediates the like creation and then the experience of the people using it. But in service, people have to actually participate, co-produce and manage it to and then even recreate the service to make it exist. So it seems like uh, in a sense, the tools are serving as a system to like support this continued recreation of the stakeholders. So in a sense, we may be able to see service design in relation to meta design. <laughs> so ah, yeah, thank you very much. I'm learning so much from this discussion. I really appreciate. And OK, let me move to then our next question. All right, what challenges are service designers currently facing? It's a super question, Mizo, because <laughs> uh, as we were saying in, in in this starting of the discussion, I think that probably one thing that is very important is this this idea of accountability. So, how we take into account the effect of our action through service or at different levels. Also, because some of these levels are not really visible, just to say organizational level, just to mention one or the, the long-term effect, just because we tend to evaluate the synchronous process just to measure, just to say performance or satisfaction, is very difficult to understand it on a long term. And when you start, for example, making choices about transportation, so uh, uh, are, um, uh, using, for example, a method to evaluate which kind of service could be more appropriate just to say to foster circularity in urban transportation. You include a lot of complexity that are not really uh, um, accountable if you are not evaluating this idea of impact. So I think that the two words in the future that we have to, to include, both in, in terms of tools and in terms of learning is impact, accountability, and at the end, the final, final word is evaluation. We have to evaluate what we do. And it's a common practice in another field, and we work on that. It's a quite different task, but I think that the next big thing will be evaluate impact, also in service. It's already an accepted perspective in, in the research framework, for example, in the European Union, when you deal with research in general about innovation, but also about design innovation, you are asked to demonstrate this impact and evaluate the process that you are doing. So I think it will be the next, frontier for, for us, for uh, scholars, and for also practitioners to, to, to start discussing these this issues. Yeah, adding to that, I think uh, uh, we have been concentrated for uh, many years uh, in uh, being kind of the user advocate uh, in a context in which decisions were uh, maybe taken considering other other perspectives only and um, there were th there was all that narrative around the fact that services were broken uh, they were not working well for people uh, i've been working also now with uh, in the public sector in particular in italy has always been at the center of this type of uh, discussion uh, but now i think uh, the things that have been changed changing uh, quite fast uh, uh, in uh, in many different in many industries and uh, it's not that much a matter of um, 
make things work well for people as it was before. I think we are already there uh, in, uh, in, many, in many sectors. And so, and also, uh, I think if we want to contribute to a new generation of services, uh, making things work well is maybe not uh, um, the only challenge that we have in front of us. So for me, the challenge is, uh, I'm thinking also of my practice, is uh, to um, help the organizations, the service providers we work with, understand that it's not just a matter of designing a good user experience or a good process for the employees delivering the service, but it's a matter of looking at the different outcomes that we generate at many different levels in the different steps of that experience. And uh, including that in part, as part of the conversation and as part of uh, the, the project and the activity we are doing uh, in real um, engagement uh, is, 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 or is still a challenge, uh, uh, even if there is uh, awareness on the fact that uh, we need to transition towards uh, a higher, let's say, accountability or in general take more responsibility uh, in uh, many different aspects of uh, what we produce. I think that's still uh, something in which we can uh, contribute, let's say, in, uh, in promoting uh, uh, that approach. And uh, if tools or new tools could help, uh, let's say, bringing the conversation to the table, I'm fine with that. In, in my opinion, I, I think we, uh, I mean, also trying to sum up what Roberta and Stefano uh, said, uh, we need to consider both uh, transversal challenges, such as that of evaluation that are actually um, part of uh, can become part of, of the of the approach and that can uh, support the, the validation of the approach uh, with uh, uh, vertical uh, challenges uh, that are concerning uh, the challenges of, of the society of the economy that uh, everybody need to need to face and uh, so it's a, it's a balance that we need to find between bringing forward the discipline uh, from a, a disciplinary perspective and on the other end uh, evolving it uh, in order to be uh, always contemporary and really be able to uh, meet contemporary requirements. Miso, if I if I could add, because there there were uh, a question in the chat or a comment. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh please go um, ahead. <laughs> posted by Gary Van Patter that I see on the screen, and I, I want to I want to 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 answer it. Uh, I think I think that there is a question about the definition of complexity that could not really be included totally in our discussion about tools. I think that there are premises that that tells us that there's, there's been, I think, at the early 90 uh, and end of uh, other millennium, a lot of discussion about that. So I think that we always uh, tend to act in a kind of reductionist environment. So probably I think that we could start from today, from this discussion, uh, to define a, a new part of this service design enterprise in terms of uh, research, it could be critical service design. So starting from the definition of what I think Gary was, was mentioning, uh, what we call wicked context. So problematic context in which we could not really uh, finally decide uh, a clear strategy just because of the complexity or the multi-layered dimension of the problem. I think that this means that service design like design in general must open up a little bit connection as Roberta was saying in the beginning with other discipline. So just to say, include a little bit more of system thinking, include a little bit more or uh, visualization or mapping technique. I recently interviewed uh, Laszlo Barabasi, a friend again of Paolo, that was uh, explaining me that there is a hidden, a dark matter that lies behind the, the visible thing. And this dark matter is made of 
networks, okay? So just, just to mention an example, we take in a, a plurality uh, of perspective that could help us in, in, in having a broader and deeper vision of the phenomena that we want to tackle with our action in service design. And finally, there is a, a further question, but I don't want to take too much time. We have to discuss the framing of the, our entire society, because if we are in a capitalist society, some part of this discussion are already predefined in our social systems, in our value system, and also in our entrepreneurial or innovation system. So I think a huge amount of question that we could not solve immediately, but I think that if we start this critical service design, perhaps we could face it. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Stefano. I also would like to add that like a uh, service can sometimes be seen as a moral system as well. When, especially when we observe the service indignity incident that sometimes takes place in like a service industry, like an airplane, for example, <laughs> people, passengers being kicked out because of like a, uh, uh, like a, uh, of a conduct, but a conduct is a representation of a different moral principles. So I think service uh, is actually, I think it's another challenge that now it seems like the problems that we observe are uh, like a kind of like hmm, in, uh, inspired us to think about how service is not a separate entity, but also like interconnected with all different parts of the society from multiple levels. This is so inspiring. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, all right, so the next question is more about the future, all right, so how do you think service design tools will evolve? Roberta, you first now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so as I was a bit anticipating uh, um, uh, in um, uh, before we are looking at the interception with the variety of disciplines that could help us uh, include some of the elements we've been talking uh, uh, about today in the conversation when we are designing services. So, for example, when we uh, it when we look at uh, human behavior, uh, something that is very common uh, in uh, in service design is to um, map out the user archetypes uh, or personas at the beginning of the project to understand who we are designing for. Uh, we are mm, looking more at uh, uh, dynamic behaviors and how those behaviors could evolve over time uh, based on uh, uh, the, the type of actions that could be taken in order to, to, to raise uh, some uh, broader, let's say, considerations. Um, or on the other hand, uh, when we, we, we use a tool that is called system map, or ecosystem map in some cases uh, to um, uh, be able to analyze uh, all the elements that are part uh, of uh, the system we are and the service that we are dealing with uh, and uh, looking at their connections. Uh, but we are taking inspiration from uh, system thinking to really understand the um, uh, value exchange uh, more like as uh, a continuous uh, and uh, loop and uh, always like a uh, give and take relationship and uh, enlarging the perspective from uh, the, the system or the ecosystem that is around the service where we are um, uh, that we are dealing with, uh, looking also at the broader interconnections. And these uh, can raise very interesting conversations uh, also with uh, wor while working with clients on uh, uh, new type of connections and the relationship of different ways of thinking of what they are doing. Uh, and then uh, we are looking at uh, more like the interception with uh, speculative design, uh, bringing in some elements uh, that allow us to consider, to better consider, let's say, different scenarios uh, than uh, what we are doing uh, now, uh, uh, focusing on really like uh, innovating uh, the, the services in the, more in the short term. And this can raise very, again, interesting conversations around uh, how organizations who are providing services uh, themselves may evolve over time and anticipating some uh, decisions to current days. So mostly we are looking at these uh, fields at the moment. Uh, we um, 
try to look uh, at vertical as well, like uh, uh, designing AI based services. Uh, do we need different tools for that or not? Or designing for specific sectors uh, like health, healthcare. But uh, one of our takeaways is that it's really more a way of uh, how we think of uh, the key elements that are part of uh, designing services, such as uh, the humans involved, uh, the systems and the connections and uh, uh, the, the, the evolution of the experiences over time. So that's why we are mainly focusing on these directions in this moment. Yeah, also, if I can add, also trying to go a bit beyond the, um, the use, I mean, the, 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 the trend that we are, uh, in, in the last years, uh, 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 very much uh, uh, adopted of filling canvases, filling uh, templates, uh, and uh, very codified tools, as I was also mentioning in the introduction. So uh, maybe borrowing from other disciplines, te techniques that uh, are uh, more maybe guidelines uh, that can support uh, the uh, the the answer to these uh, to these new thematic vertical or transversal challenges, rather than um, uh, really uh, restricting to just filling up something very structured. Uh, while uh, Roberta and and Francesca were talking, I was trying to. Uh, write down some words and I think that they are important words in general for design because they are uh, the center of discussion now in, in design research uh, in design uh, criticism and, and I think that probably the most important thing is the relation with the artificial in general uh, there has been published recently I think a, a book by Clary D. not that is expanded this, this, con, this definition of artificial following Victor Margolin thing. And, and I think that this idea of, of the intersection between the artificial and web service design is, because just to mention your, your again, statement, Miso, about the idea of co-production. Is it the same thing if we co-produce not only uh, among human, but including, for example, piece of technology that as agency, I think is one of the thing that large service offering are, are posing to the discipline, uh, just to mention one. And there are, there are other words like, like that are kind of, uh, let's say, uh, fashionable now, like decolonizing or gender or inclusion that is not so fashionable, but is, I think, a good word that we have to discuss. So uh, diversity and, and a perspective that, in my opinion, is quite important for the evolution of the dis discipline, discussing what means for us a more than human society or, or post-human society for some other philosopher, or a trans-human society, because there's a lot of intersection in our immediate and I think in next year evolution that that really, really uh, put on the, our our desk as researchers these these things, these problems, this new perspective. And, and I think we have also to decide which balance we want to put in extreme technological de development and connection with this extreme technological development and the idea of, for example, fostering a discussion about model of growth on one side and idea, ideas of diverse technological vision and social vision. So if we uh, consider all this is not, in my opinion, so clear which kind of tool you have to use. Because, sorry, as Michel Foucault was saying, through this, through, through this, I don't know the English words for dispositive. Through this uh, social technical construct, you could really influence society and individual behavior. Foucault says that you could control them. <laughs> so I think that sometimes service systems, when they are globalized, when they 
uh, use this globalized language are proposing a kind of unique world that I'm not really agreeing with. So I think that we have to discuss this because through efficiencies, through performance, through uh, business orientation, sometimes we are past something different. It is a kind, yes, some philosophers again says is kind of uh, ideological dominance or ideological colonialism. So I think we have to take into account this if we want really to change something. Okay. So my take on this. Wow, this is so inspiring. <laughs> so two days ago in my Design for Dignity class, I had an opportunity to discuss with my students about uh, beyond human-centered design because the topic of the service, uh, this class is dignity. And then many of us interpret it as human dignity so you're like a uh, like a suggestion about transhuman society with like a, uh, and then it's like a suggestion of a service design is very inspiring and also like about think yeah thinking about whether the tools are operating on the principle of control or is it more of a framework for a principle of participation this would be like an interesting thing that we can continue to think together <laughs> and by the way i'm impressed how like what you just talked to like connect very naturally to some of the questions that we already got in the registration process so i think this is a perfect timing to move into uh like to open this to like the questions from the audience so I will start with a set of questions that we got from the, we received from the registration process. And then uh, if, if the audience can start to add their questions in the chatting window, I will eventually move into the chatting window and then connect the questions to our panelists. All right, so let me start with like an interesting first question, all right? How can we empower others to understand service design? especially in the realm of service design for climate resilience. So this is one of the like a change and challenge that you just mentioned. So I thought, wow, this is so like, a, like relevant. <laughs> Roberta, oh, you. I, I start uh, very briefly. I think that there are uh, some emergent area of work for service design just for uh, just to mention, uh, action of, of service design in uh, public public sphere, so public service design, and especially in some content, in my opinion, are relevant in which there are a lot of new experiences and prototypes. Just to mention one, when we start intervening in in urban context, especially making uh, making project that uh, on one side are of service design, on the other side are that's called about social innovation, in which you want to co-produce and include people in the uh, process, not only of design, but only uh, really in the, the co-production. Uh, uh, I know, Miso, that you are really interested in healthcare or in care in general. And if we imagine uh, looking at the demographic scenarios, what could, what could be our future in our society, the idea that we are becoming older and older, uh, I imagine that there is a huge space just for just for this, in which we could, on one side, take into account this idea of resilience, uh, like resilient society, even if it's a super broad definition of what resilience could be. And in terms of uh, the answer that includes probably the, the, the value that we were mentioning before, so how we could provide inclusion, how we could provide fair labor, necessary to produce these services, how we could foster dignity both in the worker and in the beneficiary, in the user of this service, how we could sustain with our uh, uh, growth model the idea of a, a renovated welfare that could really enable this from a, a public investment perspective. So there's, a, again, a huge, a huge, huge challenge in my opinion, it's a gigantic opportunity because we could transform our society in a better one. So I think that resilience is at the same uh, at the same uh, moment both a strategy because designer must be resilient to <laughs> intervene in this kind of context because it's not where the money goes. Just to say it, 
And on the other side is where society needs. It's not only consume, it's not only business, it's something different, but it could have a great effect on society. So I think it's, it's a super important challenge. I see the, the possibility for uh, uh, small communities, for example, or groups of people to self-organize uh, and uh, redefine uh, what some of the things that we can consider services and the way they cooperate. And this, in that sense, uh, um, having some uh, support in, a way, in the way of thinking of that could help. On the other hand, completely, I see uh, big companies, uh, um, let's say, uh, the possibility through service design to reflect on uh, repetitions, redundancies, and many things that make them uh, inefficient, which, uh, which is a concern for a big organization, but sometimes it also generates a higher, uh, obviously, uh, impact when it comes to climate uh, concerns and, as well. So I, maybe that's a, a corner uh, perspective that for them <laughs> becomes more interesting. Thank you. So let me move then to the next question. Would you believe, uh, okay, hmm. oh, interesting. Would you believe that the service design tools to be evolved for emerging technologies development? I think you already like, uh, like I had a wonderful comment about this question, but just in case that like uh, we may have other insights. I'm especially interested in this question because I think this is, has been a change in the service industry already. And then it has been accelerated because of the COVID-19 and all the requirements for like a keeping distances between people. So it, I think the service industry in general from labor perspective and technology perspective and cultural perspective as well is going through like a really rapid change these days. So it will be inevitable that uh, service industry will be like more and more of the operating by emerging technologies. So like uh, any thoughts about like uh, from the service design tools perspective? <laughs> I think uh, a thought about this is the, that if we look at how mm -hmm. digital transformation and the, the, the way in which the digital uh, technologies have been spreading recently in the services themselves, that is, is uh, very much connected with the reasons why uh, many companies started to look for service designers and uh, uh, people uh, using uh, uh, this type of tools uh, and bringing them into their uh, organizations to basically being able to rethink uh, processes and experiences uh, with the introduction of the new digital touch points. And so if we uh, build on that uh, and we look at other types of technologies that uh, are emerging and may become uh, uh, similarly, let's say, uh, widespread uh, in the next years, uh, then uh, yes, I think it's absolutely important to, to reflect on, uh, on the, 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 the practice and the tools that we use, uh, because uh, we may be involved in a new wave, uh, let's say, of rethinking the way in which services are built. And uh, in our opinion, uh, this is uh, very much connected with uh, uh, the, the, the potentially uh, how the um, AI based services will spread and uh, it's not said that with the existing methodologies we will have uh, the, the, the capabilities let's say to handle uh, specific thinking that uh, becomes important when you have that type of uh, relationship interaction uh, to design. Yeah and I, I sorry, I I don't know if actually this is something that can be um, solved by evolving uh, the tools. Uh, for sure, it's it's a matter of of knowledge, uh, because as emerging technologies are becoming the new touch points of any process, uh, for sure we need to to know them and we need to know how they work, their potentialities. Uh, and then of course, I mean, as we, as we, as we did with AI, uh, there can be tools that can support a, a, a better design for uh, these processes mediated by technology, but uh, it's not that 
uh, is not just about evolving existing tools. Thank you. We are starting to have more questions in the chatting window. Oh, Christian has a wonderful comment that I suggest we shift emphasis from services that get delivered to customers toward situations that are experienced by humans. Situations are complex and wicked in details terms. That actually relates to the next question that I was going to ask from the registration system that what do service designers do when the challenges being faced have nothing to do with the services? And personally, when I saw this question, I felt like mm, maybe it's me because I'm studying service design. But to me, everything in the world is related to service. And especially like because we are human and I define service as a system of participation rather than seeing it as a product to be delivered to customer. It's a system that supports, I mean, service has existed since the beginning of the human history. We had so many different types of services, the religious services, a community that people support each other. And then we had slavery, servatum, which is the origin of the word service. We had the servants, which was like a dominant system in the 18th and 19th century. And then we are in today that we mass produce service and then sell it as a pizza product. However, it has always been a way that people help each other. And then the way that people perceive the world to make have it make sense to us from like any complicated situation. So yeah, I personally argue that actually anything in the world could be seen as a service. <laughs> That's my thought. But I think it's a pretty interesting question. What do we do as service designers when the problems are uh, less related, less like uh, interconnected to services? Hmm. I see also mm -hmm. here, sorry, no, just a reminder Paolo, that Paolo, go. Oh. No, one question was was uh, reminding us that today is the global mm -hmm. climate strike day all over the world. So that's maybe one of the big challenges that were the concept of service and service design tools mm -hmm. may be reframed in a way. Sorry, just if, if I may add a, a comment on Paolo's words. Uh, I'm here in, uh, not in Milan, I'm in uh, Bolzano, is a city in the mountains. And, and today here in the Faculty of Design and Art, there is a conference called By Design or By Disaster. Okay. So th this means that we have two different kinds of possibility. We could rationally or with a participated process change the, the focus of, of our action uh, and evaluating strategies for facing, just uh, as Paolo was saying, uh, global challenges, so like cl the climate one. On the other side, we could use a different kind of perspective, this by disaster. So there are, as Nicholas Luhmann was mentioning, risk in, in large technical society. And this risk depends about the interconnection of very complex technology uh, and also social technologies. So when we have this kind of situation, just melting down of ice in, in the Arctic, what we, we could say if we are not facing this as a kind of universal task. Uh, I, there was a comment in the chat uh, talking about uh, uh, using the word uh, um, I think pluriversal instead of global. And I think it was a kind of mentioning or uh, the, the Arturo Escobar's take or also Bruno Latour takes on this. That is mentioning this idea that we are living in a climatic regime. So we could not avoid the fact that we have to, 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 to face this challenge. So What's just to answer, pla yeah. Planet, planetary, yeah. not planetary. Planetary, not yes. Planetary as, as a li, li, different different take uh, from pluriversal, I prefer pluriversal one. But just to say that uh, we are start looking at a society that will work more and more, sorry to say that, by disaster, not by design. And probably what we are searching for is not like another take after the enlightenment of universalism, because it's quite difficult. 
and and and, and I think it's uh, personally is a possibly a good attitude to 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 face problem, but probably we will never reach the fact that we are we we could act as a uh, as one uh, as a uh, un unique universe. And I, I imagine that we have to, to uh, be prepared to, to face situation in which intervention is an international by disaster. So are pushed by not, not foreseeable events that could happen, even if we know that they will happen, just to say climate change, I will sing. Mm -hmm. So when we see, for example, simulation about the 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 uh, growth of of ocean level what we could do from a single uh, individual perspective probably nothing apart from advocacy of the problem uh, so i think that we have also to 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 discuss again what is the idea of a common action a society action to 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 tackle this gigantic uh, adversity that we are going to face it's not optimistic, but it's, I think it's, a, again, a good opportunity for us. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for the great questions and uh, like wonderful answers. So we are running out of time for today's session, but I think we have wonderful insights and questions in the chatting window. So Angelica, if you don't mind, would you mind like saving this conversation and then sharing with us in the email so that we can continue this great conversation in the future? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. So yeah, thank you so much for the conversation. I hope our collaboration and discussion uh, can continue for the future. I th I'm so inspired already that like I feel like I can write three papers like in, on the spot. <laughs> so uh, yes. thank you everyone for joining the session. And Paolo, did you want to add a comment for like maybe like an, for the next session? Yeah, next I mean, we, next session will be uh... Probably, you know, 99%, but it's, we are working on that uh, uh, bridging design uh, with, with music and sound. So they may sound a little bit far from the kinds of conversations that we are having today. But what is interesting, you know, having now five different conversations that we, we, we had, um, you know, whether it was the starting point of uh, journalism, misinformation, data physicalization, game design, we ended up discussing more or less, you know, always this very global issues and challenges that we have. So I think it's a sign that probably we really need to uh, reframe uh, seriously design because at the end, uh, where is the starting point, whatever is the starting point, we end up having those conversations anyway. So I think it's it's good sign, a lot of work, I think, to be done here at the Center for Design, but I think oh, where you come from and you, you, I'm really happy you joined this conversation. So next session will be the end of October. So we'll share with the same channels that brought you here, uh, probably uh, all the information you need in order to join. So hope to see you again next month. Thank you, everybody. And thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you, thank Stefano, you. Roberta, and Francesca. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. See you Bye -bye. again.